News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And uh, this morning, lovely day again out there. Uh, it's not wet, it's lovely. And uh, this morning, uh, joining Newsline is uh, that uh, legal expert, amongst other things, Mr. Krishma Mansuri. We're very good morning to you. Top of the morning to you, Paras. Thank you. And um, I just want to start off, uh, uh, Krishmal, with the how necessary is it for these uh, independent commissions to get their funds, their, their monies, uh, paid to them directly through the consolidated fund as opposed to getting it uh, through the ministry and so on. How important is that? Very important. That is why, if you recall, when particularly after the 19th Amendment, but even before that, when we, uh, when the whole idea, independent commission, uh, one of the prerequisites is that it must be independent to carry out its work. Mm -hmm. So that commission and its servants should not be subject to a ministerial portfolio allocations that come in the budget to a minister, but more by the consolidated fund, yeah. which uh, comes directly under the purview of parliament yeah. and not of the executive government, the, gov the, the party that forms government or the executive that forms the cabinet portfolios, but parliament in general, because parliament has overall control over all the finance of this country. That's income uh, and expenditure. In income and expenditure. Of course, there is, these days there is much more expenditure than income when parliament <laughs> is concerned. Yeah. But uh, leaving that, you can't make your point. Be uh, that as it may. Be that as it may. Uh, although Parliament appears to be more interested in how much money they can get for themselves than 300 million cars that they seem to buy for themselves, yeah. uh, which is not the financial control we expected them to do. Yeah. Uh, but then the more they are happy, and you know, I suppose we must also be happy that they are happy. Uh, so uh, independence is assured by that. And one of the prerequisites of an independent commission is that you don't subject yourself to a control by a minister when you're carrying out the functions of the independent commission or independent authority, but you the funds are paid directly through the under the purview of parliament by, by the consolidated fund or a similar machinery. So that that's uh, and, and it's very important to assure that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you will be subservient to some minister or part of the executive that makes decisions that uh, affect your salary and promotions and mm -hmm. all of that. So, so these agencies uh, would be like the primary commission, like the auditor general, all, all independent department. Audit, the department auditor general. Uh, uh, then, uh, I mean, all the other the elections commission, all these commissions, yeah. uh, they have to be independent. And that's one way of assuring independence uh, is, is is not making them subservient to a particular minister. But would uh, would that be the same? Do you think for the police commission as well? Yeah, all commissions, all independent mm. commissions. So. So that that that's a good uh, that's a good thing if if that can happen. Well, it, it's been assured. It's been assured through the uh, through no. not, not even before the ninety. All the commissions that have been established yeah. uh, so far as my memory prevails, all commissions have been assured that independence with regard to their payments, etc., mm. by under direct control of Parliament, purview of the Auditor General, rather than under a ministerial portfolio. Now, talking about um, the independence of these commissions and so on. Um, I noticed the other day that summons were served on, uh, uh, is, is I suppose, is summons the right word, when the yes. President and yes. the Prime Minister both asked to come to court. Yeah, the President and the Prime Minister are also citizens of the Republic, so uh, summons is the right word. It's the right word. Right they, word. Didn't, they didn't go, they couldn't fit yeah. it in. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a question for me also, uh, for several reasons. And now, His Excellency the President and the Honorable Prime Minister, no doubt, they have a lot of work to do, unlike yeah. you and me. Uh, a lot of a country to run and all that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, when uh, you see, we we uh, our constitution or the republic that we have built for ourselves is governed by a constitution. We believe in a constitutional supremacy. Mm. No one is above the law. Everyone mm. is subservient and subject to the law. Yeah. So there is a rule of law that governs all of us that is enshrined in the constitution. Mm. And the constitution is supreme. Say, for example, unlike England, where there is a sovereign majesty and sovereignty is held by Her Majesty, and the parliament has another concept of supremacy of parliament. So there is a there is a continuous conflict between these parts. But in Sri Lanka, executive power held by His Excellency the President, the Honorable Prime Minister, and the Cabinet of Ministers, legislative held by, power held by the parliament, judicial power held by the court system, they are all subservient to a constitution, which is supreme. We have a constitutional supremacy. Mm. Now, if that is so, no one can be above the, above the law. Now, uh, so if from someone is summoned 
particularly now if you look at uh, i'm not a criminal lawyer for as as you know mm. but uh, going my memory going back to criminal procedure uh, that we studied in law school i think starting from around section 50 55 coming to about 60s of the code of criminal procedure act yeah uh, there are ways and means of serving summons now particularly when it comes to public servants yeah uh, uh, I, i remember now say uh, his excellence the president honorable prime minister public servants yeah so uh, if you can't serve it personally in the residence or something i mean if someone were to say well we don't know where the president lives or the prime minister lives they can be served on the office say uh, farash okatli was working in a government office yeah. and if he's a public servant the summons can be served at the, at the office of the where the player, 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 person works and then they given leave to go to court and all of that so one can't say even if i my in my reading of it even if i were his excellency the president which i i hope that i will never be encumbered with but even if i were i can't say my duties of office compel me not to come to court because the, the law is that if you have to go to court you are allowed leave to go to court uh. so that is one aspect then now the, now here if of course if you are an accused and if you are asked to come to court and if you don't come you can be immediately arrested and brought to court but the uh, situation is slightly different if you are a witness now here i think i don't know the facts of this particular case for us because they, they, at that time there were so many cases are being filed mm. but i believe that this is uh, this is initiated upon a complaint made by someone no uh, was it his excellent president or his office or mm. some complaint made that they were what, some forged letter some forged letter or something so if the complainant yeah or those who made the complaint or a principal witness on the on which that case is based they were basing that case on a principal witness say the honorable prime minister to come and say that yes i did this or whatever if the court considers that the uh, that their presence is necessary court can issue a warrant a warrant for them to uh, come to court if they don't answer summons court can issue a warrant under certain circumstances to be recorded reason to be recorded court can issue a warrant number 2 I don't know what uh, I I mean I don't know the facts of the case but if if I were a defense counsel and if some prosecution is relying on some witness to come and the witness doesn't keep doesn't keep 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 not turning up in court mm. to prosecute the other side's case I'll move the honorable judge and say look they don't have evidence uh, quit my client and uh, st- drop this case if someone is depending upon some evidence to prove that they did something yeah and that evidence is not forthcoming So that might be what's going on. Right? I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, that's a possibility. That's a that, possibility that, that the case will just get dropped. Shakespeare says, "My dear Watson, you take away all the improbabilities and the remainder process of elimination, and remainder, however impossible it may seem, has to be the solution." <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so uh, uh, let's rely on Shakespeare for that. And uh, not Shakespeare. What's uh, Sherlock Holmes? Sell up forms, sell up forms, and Doctor Watson, dear me. Yes. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, if you don't have evidence and witnesses are forthcoming, I, I don't see if there's a case. Uh, Not in. Um, uh, um, yes, and then might just get uh, dropped off. By the way. Um, now then, uh, thank you to one of my uh, viewers, uh, one of our viewers, who's saying that uh, one more time, the information has come out. that shows that there has been a departure of process and they are quite right the island newspaper reports that this morning uh, that the prime minister uh, and kabir hashim got the sri lankan ceo confirmed without performance appraisal and uh, if that is not uh, a departure from due process what on earth is thank you for pointing that out to us and uh, we've made a note of that and of course the sri lankan I- airlines uh, everyone Yes. I remember I told you this I was an employee at Sri Lankan Airlines um, for a while when I was in university. Yeah. And everyone uh, has to go through an appraisal, uh, a very stringent appraisal particularly when we were crew and flying. Uh, so, so many appraisals on every flight sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um and and uh, and, and uh, it's based upon all of that that even your increment is given. Right. So if if that applies to what is good for the gander must be good for the goose. Yeah. If that applies to the staff, surely this uh, CEO must also be appraised. Indeed. And apparently, I've been taking some uh, half million not uh, perks home right. uh, at the expense of the coffers, and the uh, company is running at a loss. And you and I, uh, our taxes are being increased, and we have to pay up uh, for all this. Indeed. So it does help if you have siblings who are uh, connected to uh, mm. the the. the corridors of power it appears to be so indeed it, it does help so it's all about who you know what you know which brings us nicely to this thing uh, 
neo feudalism yeah, yeah that's uh, that, that, that's, uh, that, that's a good uh, uh, thing and uh, let, let's point it out what do you mm. mean that's a concept that i've been working on for us you know some of us they say wordsworth says you know in pensive and vacant mood flash upon a inward i know when we are not doing anything things keep flashing so uh, <laughs> i've been thinking of have we really lost feudalism uh, and i just had to build this up uh, for our, for for our viewers to 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 bite on if we if i may yeah. um you know uh, we say that the landowners had uh, there was a feudalistic system that we belong to and some of our ancestors you all remember uh, and you know there so the, the the farmers used to come and land on the plot and then give us some and they at the end of and then that was that feudalistic system so we were subservient to the landowner the, the person who owned the land upon which we lived and we depended on that person have we actually lost that or have we replaced those landowner class those that possess land with another class that possess political power mm-hmm. that is what i would like to call your opinion we have now we are now trying to be subservient from the top corporate downwards up uh, yours and my friends who may have been in school with us we i don't know whether we are depending on for everything as i always say from birth to death for a politician but more than that it appears that if you don't have some political clout or if you don't know this body or that body nothing can be done in this country and the politicians love this so they love to be at the center of attention and because they know that all these fellows have to come to you uh, to get something done so from the land owner class are we continuing a feudalistic attitude mm. that being by subservient to a new political class and if that is so have we actually gained independence so this is a question that i'd like to ask our viewers also do you think that you are equal to those that lawfully or unlawfully wield political power and if not then 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 what are you doing about it but that that that's what it is why why is it that uh, people feel that everything must go through the uh, through the politician of the area precisely everything. because the, the the constitution says that the citizen is supreme yeah we are the ones who hold the sovereign power to appoint these servants they are our servants yeah. we pay them a salary we give them to eat we even provide the car for their wife to go shopping mm-hmm. and we and we pay taxes for them to buy 300 million rupee cars and we do all of that and then we go master serve them surely they should be master serving us mm-hmm. so so uh, you need to, you need to think of a system for us and that's why i say purely a regime change is not going to give us a result that we want in this country so we, we, we need a paradigm shift we no. need a shift of our system yeah and you need to get off from that uh, what that comfort chair we talk of the comfort yes. zone the do nothing the seat the do nothing seat and get out and join those others who are trying to make that change and be the change that we want to see indeed um <coughs> the uh, former attorney general uh, sorry sorry the former auditor general you see we're having a legal man he'll go to the mm. attorney general but anyway the mm. former auditor general um sarat mahadunne la- last morning said um that we a one time colleague of national list in oh i see yes indeed he was empty <laughs> for uh, one day he was number one i was number two indeed and um so that's a good point we'll bring that up but he said that now that the uh, national audit uh, act is uh, on and the uh, the national Pro- audit commission has been is also in place uh, that the public have a right now to complain let's say to the auditor general about some sort of thing that bothering them and now the auditor general department would be obliged to look at that legally obliged to look at that mm-hmm. although in the past they they would entertain these uh, complaints there was no legal obligation but now he sa- he says and it's one of the good things that he was uh, thought right that's that's very healthy if there's uh, some provision i mean so so that that that's sort of a very uh, healthy uh, healthy news but the provision uh, alone for us provision alone i mean that's very healthy if if uh, if uh, my adam says it then it must be so uh, i haven't gone through all the details of the new act but if, if he says that that provision is there of course there is criticism from the auditor general officer itself that it, it had been watered down from the original version that it was yes he did uh, yeah, several did. powers have been cut off but be that as it may once again if there is a provision like that that's good i think similar provision is needed for the bribery act also because they are also they wait no for someone to actually uh, formally make a complaint and that complaint they must to, for them to act upon someone must make a complaint 
So uh, now this is there already in bribery act. That's what I was trying to say. The provision being there alone won't do. You need to act on it. We need to act on it and particularly now we have to find novel ways of maybe using the Right to Information Act yeah. and together to read together with these provisions. To get the information out from one, take that information to the other, maybe the Auditor General and say, look, I got this information, now act on it. So we have to now as citizens of a republic, as I always say, be active and use these provisions to get what we want and make our uh, elected representatives and our public officials. Remember, corruption happens in both places. Yeah. We sometimes cast only an eye on the 225 or some fellows uh, who, have, who are elected, who are always in the public eye because the media keeps running after them with cameras. But other than that, uh, there are also public officials who are part and parcel of this manifest corrupt system. I mean, I, I'm told, I was shocked yesterday that at a very, uh, a very low level, uh, public officials, a lady, uh, had refused to move something from her table to another without some uh, thousand or two thousand rupees. Apparently, nothing happens in public office uh, uh, without giving some bribe uh, or santosam. Now that is very sad uh, be because it's a it's a bane to uh, the other public officials who want to do a good job. It's that a bit is like this story I heard years and years ago that if you went to the customs and it might be unfair now, but at the time I heard the story yeah. was that you go to customs and they'd have a draw open, open, draw open, draw open, and you yeah. needed to pop something in it. Yes, and then your file would move along. Yeah, so that's what I'm trying to say. Now there are public officials, my my, my parents are public servants, uh, who want to do a job and and we, they don't have luxuries. Uh, and I, I remember at times they, they struggled to meet uh, a school fee set because we went to a private school. Uh, but but they managed and we managed and you know whether it was a cutlet and a sandwich we managed. Yeah. Uh, and and that's how that's how those public servants built up their lives. And there are still public servants who want to do that, who want to do their job, who don't want to take a cent out of what they lawfully earn. But when this sort of corruption happens in public service, also people tend to just uh, once again that 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 new elite class. So you, you are now looking at a, uh, uh, from a class with some power that can help you rather than like, trying to stand on your own and stand on your rights as citizens. Mm -hmm. And that we must somehow try to overcome. And we have to for that go to a, to a paradigm shift, a system change for us. Because I think from the public service point of view, they must be looking, well look, if our, if our bosses are earning by the millions and billions and taking, why, should, why can't we take a few thousands and also make our ends meet? You know, mm -hmm. so that, that must be the, the viewpoint. But that is wrong and we need to frown down upon it. Unfortunately, remember, those who give a bribe yeah. are equally guilty as those that take a bribe. On that note, on that note, we'll go for a short break. Don't go away. After all, this is Newsline. And welcome back. Now then, uh, Krishmal Varusuri is our guest this morning. And um, this is another matter that uh, I don't know whether you've noticed. You must have noticed. News mongering. Yeah, I, I we thought, seem yeah. to be we seem to be given these little gundus <laughs> on a regular basis, on maybe weekly, fortnightly, monthly basis mm -hmm. anyway. <coughs> and you know, it, it's a bit like um, giving somebody a bit of chewing gum. Yeah, yeah. and we chew on it. And we chew on it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought it up because yes. you're being a media Yes. Did uh, you notice? I I I've actually made a list. I I I, I was hoping you'll bring. It. Now, yeah. for us, I, I on, on my way, uh, I just made a few notes from uh, the last day, <coughs> last month yeah. or so. Um, we, we had that list, so called list that we ran after. The perpetual list that one minister said that there were eight people or 80 people or then some channel started counting down like the cricket <coughs> scoreboard. No, these are the ones who say they haven't taken. These are the ones who say they have taken. And we bit on that. We were given a carrot, you know, carrots are given to donkeys, no? So we were given a carrot, we the donkeys ate on that. Right? Then a few weeks in, then they came out in the affidavits, remember? Affidavits, yes. swearing affidavits. So that, that week, whole week was taken, who was going to willing to give affidavits in, in Pali? Yes. Then we went on to... It was to quite alright, because the Prime Minister had already given his affidavit. Yeah, yeah. Then, New York time. Now they forgot China, strategic interest, Krakenel, Thailand, New York time. And money given. Then we spoke of that for about a week and a half. Now no one is talking about that. Thing. Then came that uh, good uh, MP, honorable MP from the northern area, Sujay Kala, who made a statement. I don't know from where that statement came. Once again, we were given a carrot. We bit on that. Now nothing. Vijay Kala went to London, came back. Someone had gone to the north and taken a statement. Nothing on that anymore. Then that's it. Now we're fighting on that. For us, 
whilst all this is being bitten on by us the donkeys the carrots that are dished out every week merry governing goes on the partying goes on nothing happening in the country with our tax money goes on and and we have lo and behold we have come to 3 years and then now they they talk a gum parallel as well we we'll talk about that for about another week right? yeah. then some other parallel yeah. but do do you the citizen i'm asking you the viewer are you happy with this scenario i know several of my friends including <laughs> at times they go to home yeah. parat asking me questions like you are absolutely right and you know this news news mongering has only come about because uh, firstly why haven't uh, uh, any concrete action be taken um, on various matters no we have we at at great uh, financial cost and time and energy and so on we had the the first bond issue mm. and you know they they, they had a, eventually the president appointed a commission and all that they've given some recommendations <clears throat> what's not, happening with not, exactly what's happening with that nothing's happening now new york the, the 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 fact that arjun uh, arjun mahendra arjun aloshis is in arjun aloshis is inside in remand and so on is nothing to do with the presidential commission of inquiry yeah it has come about because of a complaint made by the central bank that's to something the cid different. that's a something and now they also they show that also once or twice a week that's saying right. this stuff getting all the prisoners bus and coming then then we you know and that first bond issue uh, had all sorts of people involved there was uh, the, the prime minister came there malik uh, samrit kabir hashim arjun mahendran and uh, arjun alosh of course came there in invoking his rights and said he didn't want to talk about in it and in there and then we had the highways matter again we we showed that there was a, a serious departure from due process we had the minister uh, they are having discussions with the uh, with the tenderers and the bidders and finally we told that one of those was uh, awarded the the contract although the performance is being questioned on that company uh, then sri lankan in the first board of sri lankan was <laughs> the prime minister and his friends the second one same thing classmates so they they classmates so it's a friends club and the airline has gone down like that you know um, and before long is it going to go where a so good and, and we, so we have now we have uh, england has a royal family yeah. ruling the country we have royals ruling the country that's right we yeah. do have royals and it it, 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 it this simply won't do it's not so but farah that's the point i was trying to make is yeah. all of this is going on yeah. while they give us they dish out some carrot for us to bite on correct now the, the you the citizen needs yeah. to engage yourself very seriously because remember although we laugh at it and we may even get angry while we watch news in the night yeah. and expect a couple of fellows to go out and shout about it yeah. it's your tax money more importantly uh, you know the, there was a great judge that i i, I loved uh, reading his stuff and i had the privilege of working a little bit with him uh justice viramanthi lord bless his soul uh, who's no more with us uh, he used to say this do we think of the right of future generations he had written extensively on it the right of future generations mm. future generations of this country are going to turn back and point a finger at us saying oi what were you my fathers and mothers generation doing when our entire country was being squandered off indeed and and we are born to this country and we are in this state because you did nothing so please I I I I ask your viewers think of at least if not ourselves our future generations that we need to leave them at least a semblance of a country that they can take to the great future that that this country belongs to I I I made a little list uh, yesterday um uh, you know it I didn't have to sit down and think about it too long mm. but I made a list these are the uh, the various sort of uh, contentious projects or matters that uh, just news first is reported on uh, let me just say it very quickly mm. the nilwala ginganga diversion project mm. the southern railway extension mm. the hambantota the highway extension the northern rail line refurbishment the mana rail line refurbishment the wilpat to crisis the tab the supply of tabs crisis the sri lankan airlines matter mihin lanka um lanka puts a bank the agriculture ministry building scam the central highway scam and ladies and gentlemen i just want to uh, let you know that i haven't even mentioned the bond yet okay <laughs> and then we've had the 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 central highway scam the hambantota the port sale the matala airport sale uh crisis let's call it the lng power plant crisis the norwich only power plant crisis the ltl Uh, related uh, matters 
Of course, then we have the tire factory, we had the Volkswagen deal, and we had the, uh, we've reported on the Shangri-La uh, stroke army headquarters. Now, all these are headlines. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we've had the bond. Yeah. Bond part one. Everybody's forgotten about bond, bond part two. But yeah, now all these are headlines. That we now, I was just listening to it. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, all of these things for us surely yeah. are yeah. matters that our elected representatives can at least dish out amongst themselves and try to find solutions. No? Yeah. Other than just making headlines for us and showing us some news of some minister going and giving a speech. Yeah. Get down to work. Get your head down into some work and they can actually work on these problems. So get themselves into committees, they can work on it. But without doing that, just dishing out news for us. I mean, just like the new constitution that they're talking about. I think that's another carrot. Uh, because now, we are yesterday or day before, we are talk to, we are to be talking about some constitution. Uh, the, what the original committees after the subcommittee proposals and the constitutional committee now they are talking of uh, a couple of parliamentarians having done some nonsense with it and they don't agree with the constitution. Now remember just about a few months ago they put another mutti you know, through the JVP. The proposed 20th amendment where they wanted to curtail powers of the executive president and uh, get the president to be appointed through parliament, which I, we have discussed here, yeah. that the legislature can't elect an executive, then you're, you're, you're compromising on a separation of powers. But now that, that seems so drastic and I knew at that time that this was nothing but a political gimmick. They were going to come out with something else later and try to show the people another yeah. carrot Say, yeah. well, there is a lesser evil, so we'll go for the lesser evil. Both of these proposals are bad for us. Indeed. This day we go to a shop. Yeah. There is a, a, a Gadagahana Malupangedi here, which we know we are not going to touch because it, it, it looks rotten. There is another one which is maybe sugar coated, we don't get the smell, but that's also rotten. But because we think that this is the leg, uh, better malupang, we eat that. Yes. But we are still going to go to hospital. Yeah. You follow? So this is now what they are trying now trying to do is, okay, well, if you all think that this is bad, pick <coughs> this one. I am asking the citizens to be very, very diligent. <coughs> Look at all these provisions carefully. This has to go to strict public scrutiny. Just because something is now offered which looks a bit better than what was offered before, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good for us. So I am, I am saying that these are political, and you have, having studied the science of politics for us, we have known through history of people who try to do this sort of gimmicking with the paper. So be careful that this is not another <coughs> carrot that's being thrown your way. Just because some committee has come out with a proposal which may look good than what was uh, suggested by that private member's motion of the JVP, that constitutional amendment, that doesn't mean that this amendment is actually good. Both may be bad. Krishma Varnasura, it's been a great pleasure having you on the program. Thank you very much. And uh, Thank you these, for inviting are, me. these are serious matters uh, which uh, uh, we'd like to point out uh, that the people have not forgotten. The people are aware. And of course, the people. Um, will no doubt remember the uh, whole thing about the March 12th declaration to vote wisely to make sure that fit and proper people are voted in to represent you the people uh, in Parliament and in the various councils so once again um, <coughs> we of course reported uh, some of these matters <coughs> sorry I beg your pardon we reported some of these matters and uh, about the bond in Sri Lankan Airlines long, long time ago. We didn't wait for the commissions uh, to, to come along. We've uh, reported it um, right along. And so no doubt, one of these days, we'll probably have a commission uh, to inquire into the highways matters as well. But the bottom line is, what's being done about it? Why is no action, no concrete action being taken? Important questions that hopefully um, we'll have some answers. But News First will continue to report on these matters because we do so in, truly in the national interest. Thank you very much. And that's the way it was on Newsline today. Do take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.